Hey YouTube, um, I'm here today to make a little video uh, that I've been wanting to make for a little while. Um, it's exploring budget PC gaming. Uh, not the games themselves, but budget PCs themselves uh, and the build process. Um, I've been wanting to do it for a while. I'm quite into PC hardware. Uh, I like playing computer games, it's one of my hobbies. Um, but one of the things that I really enjoy is actually putting together the machines. And I like building high-end machines, but they're expensive and I don't often have the money to do it. Uh, but one thing that's really interested me in the last few years is looking at the budget end. Not specifically the real low end, but more uh, sort of mid-range hardware from maybe a couple of years ago. Teaming it with some of the newer hardware and seeing what you can really build, how much power you can get for as little money as possible. Um, I've built a few machines over the last few years on this sort of basis, um, but I've never had time to document the process. Um, but I'm just about to do a new build now, so I thought I would share it with you guys and let you see how it goes. So, what I've got, um, this is the machine I'm going to be working on. Here, it's a Fujitsu Siemens uh, Esprimo. Uh, P420E85 Plus is the model. Uh, not particularly important. Um, the, the idea I'm trying to present here is that this is a bog basic business machine. Uh, it's an i3 processor. Uh, it's a couple of years old, 4th gen i3. This has come out of a business, no longer being used because they've upgraded the machine. Um, it may very well have ended up in a scrapyard. Probably not because it's not that old. Um, but the point is I picked it up cheap. Um, because typically you wouldn't consider using something like that for a gaming machine. Um, but uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I've got two of those in a bundle with a couple of other machines for just under 200 quid. And that means that this machine here owes me roughly 75, 80 quid. Now I've had a look online, you can't actually get them that cheaply on their own, but uh, this particular model, cheapest one on eBay, uh, you can probably see on the screen behind me, um, 155 quid. Complete machine with hard drive, Windows license, 4 gig of RAM. Um, the i3 is an ideal processor because it's dual core with hyper threading, which means you've got four threads. So it's pretty good for modern games. It's not the most powerful, but if you're just looking at single screen 1080p gaming, sort of console style, perfect for that. The only thing this doesn't have is a video card. Now, typically these uh, business type machines would be no good for gaming because Trying to fit a decent video card in that is just not going to happen. But this is where things get interesting. A few years back, uh, NVIDIA released the GeForce 750 Ti. It was the first sort of gaming tier video card that I'm aware of that was able to run straight from the power of the PCI Express slot. It didn't need any external power from an external power supply. Typically, if you put a video card into a PC, uh, let me just show you. So this is typically the sort of video card that you would get if you were looking at low end. This is a AMD 5450, Radeon 5450. Uh, this will run off of the PCI Express slot, no extra power required, but this will not play any decent games nowadays. Um, you probably pick one of these up for about 30, 40 quid, but for gaming, it's pants. Unless you want to play Minecraft, maybe a bit of CSGO, that's about all it's going to do. If you want to play anything modern, anything that's graphically demanding, this sort of thing won't cut it. So you end up with a bigger video card. Okay, so um, I've got here, uh, this is your typical sort of gaming grade video card. Um, as you can see, it's quite chunky. Um, but the important point I'm trying to make here is if you look here, we've got one, two power connectors. Um, you usually will have at least one, maybe two of these, depending on the power requirements of the card. Uh, this is a NVIDIA 560 Ti. Um, it's come out of a older machine of mine that I'm no longer using. Um, but those power connectors mean it's, it's quite power demanding. It needs a lot of power from your power supply. The power supply in a typical business machine is not going to be able to run it. It won't have the connectors to fit into here. If you have to replace the power supply to get something that's going to run this sort of graphics card, you're going to be looking probably about 75, 80 quid upwards. Um, you may also have trouble fitting it in these cases. A lot of these business type machines have custom 
designs for the case so you can't fit off the shelf components so easily. Um, it just basically rules the machine out for this. So you end up back to drawing board building from scratch is easier. However, um, 750Ti doesn't need those uh, power connectors. It all runs straight from the PCI Express slot. Uh, that was a few years back. Uh, NVIDIA have now just released a new uh, video card. Uh, I've got one here. This is the 1050Ti. Uh, it's a box. It's a Zotac one that I've got here. Other, retail, uh, other video card manufacturers make their own versions. Um, but as you can see, it's a lot smaller than the other card I just showed you. And crucially, it doesn't have, you look at the card, it doesn't have any extra power connectors. This will run purely off the PCI Express slot. And this card is pretty beefy. It's not top of the range, obviously, but it's more than powerful enough to run modern games, 1080p, pretty decent graphic settings, decent frame rates. You're going to get console quality gaming from a PC for the, with this in, uh, and you're probably going to get better frame rates, better graphics quality than you get on your console, your PS4, your Xbox One sort of style. Uh, and it's probably not going to cost you much difference financially. So this PC, probably get it for about 150 quid online. Video card cost me 128 quid off of Amazon, brand new. You're talking less than 300 quid. Should have a pretty decent gaming machine then. So let's get to work and see how it goes. Okay, so I've got the PC set up now. It's plugged in um, just to show you how easy it is to go through this process. Um, you can see it's running Windows now. Um, this is the machine that we're using here. Uh, it's, it's working. I'm just going to shut it down and show you how easy it is once you've got Windows installed on here, which if you buy it off of eBay, it's probably already going to have Windows on it. Um, it just show you how easy it is to do this. So we shut it down. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move this keyboard out of the way, move the mouse out of the way, bring the PC in. Okay. First thing you want to do is turn the power off, disconnect the power, uh, plug or unplug all the cables. Okay. Uh, and then on the back of the machine, what you'll have is, i just move the camera down so you can see, you take off this side panel. Uh, on this one we've got two typical case screws. Phillips screwdriver, just get those two out. Nice and quick. It's probably a good idea at this point to have a pot or something to put these screws in so you don't lose them. Uh, if you're not used to working on computers or other electronic, uh, anything with screws pretty much, um, you might want to try and get into the habit of keeping screws in a pot so you don't lose them. Um, so you take that off, this side, side panel will then pull off. Some PC manufacturers, Dell are pretty good at it, actually have toolless designs so you don't even need to take screws out, there's a clip or something to take the side off, but in this one it's screws. You take the side panel off uh, and then we will line this PC down so you can see. Um, into the solar machine. So I'll just angle the camera a bit more so you can see what's going on in here. Um, now this is a power supply here. It's probably worth just having a quick glance at the power supply. Um, this one's a smaller one than your standard PC power supply. Um, but on the side of it, it should have a rating. This one says max continuous output power is 250 watts. That's pretty typical for a sort of office build machine. Um, anything for sort of 250 watts upwards will be fine for this. If you've got a small form factor machine, one that's crammed into a tiny little case, um, first of all, you're probably going to have problems fitting this graphics card in it anyway because there won't be space for it. Although I do believe they do a low profile version that will fit into a small case. Um, but if you've got one of these, uh, smaller form factor ones it's possible that they may have put a really low power power supply in it maybe 150 watt if that's the case you may have problems uh, powering a PC, uh, a graphics card off a PCI slot um, I know some of the Dell small form factors I've seen um, they actually have a mark next to the PCI Express slot on the motherboard so this is the motherboard this is the PCI Express slot it actually had screen printed on the board max 35 watts um, if you see something like that, probably not the right machine to be doing it with. But typically, most machines, you won't have a problem. Um, 
I say this is just your average typical business machine. So we've got the case open. Now we want to find the PCI Express slot, which is this one here. Okay. Um, take the card out of its anti-static bag. I've already done that. Um, ready to go in. Okay, where this slot is, on the back of the case, you'll have a uh, blanking plate. Um, some of them are toolless. This one requires tools to get to it. So there's a retaining bracket here. And take this, this should, just take this screw out. Again, good idea to have a pot for the screws. This bracket will then come off. And then we've got four blanking plates for, e for each of the respective expansion slots in the case. I'm going to just remove the top one. So again, just take the screw out. This bracket will then lift out. That's what the bracket looks like. It's just like a little L-shaped piece of metal. These are pretty standard design. Um, if you look at the graphics card, you'll see the back of it where it sticks out the case. You've actually got the same shape piece of metal. Um, it's a standard design so that they all fit in the same slots. Um, so you need to take that one out and then you've got a gap ready for the video card to go in. So once you've removed that, line your video card up with a slot. Now, I haven't got any static protection here. I've never used it. Um, if you're very inexperienced with computers and you're a bit worried about it, you can pick up an anti-static wrist strap, which will make sure that you don't discharge static into these components because they are sensitive and you could damage something. But I've always found as long as you're careful with what you're touching, you should be fine. You can ground yourself first on a radiator or something. Um, so you just want to find the slot, line it up, uh, over the slot and then push it home you should get a click like that there's a spring loaded clip on the back of the slot which slots into a little notch in the card um, if I just show you on another card actually where the slot is so the card goes into the machine that way down like that on the slot just this end you'll see there's a little notch the spring-loaded clip sits this side of the card and actually clips into this notch. So when you hear the click, you know it's in properly. Um, so that's fitted. And then at the back of the card, we just want to pop that screw that we took out of the retaining bracket into the new bracket that's gone in there from the card. And then we can pop this bigger shield on, like so, pop the screw back in for that, okay. And then we just want to pop the side panel back onto the case. So again, usually there's like little notches in the case, so it will sit on flat a little bit further backwards from the front. You should just sit it on flat and then push it forward and then pop the screws back in. So now that's the installation done. Once you've got the installation done, you then need to hook it back up. Now, what's probably worth pointing out here, before putting the video card in, we were running on the onboard graphics um, built into the uh, i3 processor. And that means we were using the video output connectors that are on the main board. So we've got a VGA DVI. Um, now that we've put a Add in graphics card in, these are now defunct. So you don't use these connectors anymore. You need to use the ones that are on the video card. 
Now, interestingly here, um, I'm not entirely sure why. I don't know if this is going to start becoming standard now. Uh, quite possibly. Um, this graphics card doesn't have a VGA connector on it. So that we had the monitor connected here to this blue one. We don't have that connector on the new graphics card. Um, that means if your monitor has a VGA connector on it, which is quite possible if you're working on a budget build using an older monitor, a cheap monitor once been handed down, whatever, um, you're going to need an adapter of some sort. Now, typically in the past, what people would have done is they would have used the DVI connector uh, with an adapter to convert it to VGA. Um, but that won't be possible on this card either because this one here, I don't know if you can see very well, um, but the DVI connector uh, only has a uh, horizontal slot there. Um, what that means is that this is a digital DVI port only. It won't give out an analog signal. Um, so you can't use one of those adapters. Um, so what you'll need is you'll need something to convert from... V, uh, from either the display port or the HDMI um, actually convert to a VGA connector uh, rather than just a passive adapter you'll need something that actually does a conversion um, you can pick up display port to VGA adapters for probably about 10 quid online so if you do have a VGA monitor you'll need that um, however a lot of monitors now have DVI connectors or HDMI or display port so if you have one of those, use them, they're better, you'll get a digital signal, you'll get better picture quality. Um, so just wanted to point that out anyway. So now that's done, we're going to hook the computer back up, so we'll plug the power in. Um, I'm going to be using an HDMI cable now, uh, so I'm going to plug that in here, into the DVI slot. Um, just a note here, what I probably should have done, um, I'm just going to switch this power supply off. Um, not all power supplies will have a switch on them. If yours does, it's probably worth switching it off uh, while you're working on the machine uh, because you may have had that machine word into life when I plugged the power in. Um, not massively important, but um, just for safety's sake. So plug the mouse in, plug the keyboard in, and we will plug the network connection back in because this PC is a cheap business machine it doesn't have Wi-Fi uh, so I'll switch the power supply back on now um, just so you can see I've just put the switch back on and then we'll fire the machine up and with a bit of luck you should see We'll get a picture on the screen as the machine boots up. Just move this camera back a bit so you get a better angle. Um, and this is just running straight off of that new video card. I'm actually just going to pause the video and set up for a better angle for the screen now. Okay, so the machine's booted into Windows. Um, what Windows 10 will do, because it's a modern operating system, it's pretty intuitive, pretty user friendly. It will actually, if you've got an internet connection, it'll go off and find the correct video driver for you. Um, but it's not always going to find the most up to date one because it gets it from the Windows driver library. So I've got here uh, the latest driver downloaded from NVIDIA's website. So I'll just show you. It was actually included in the box. Uh, they don't put driver discs in these days because the drivers get updated so often. Uh, there's a bit of paper here, it says please download driver at www.geforce.com so hit geforce.com you come to the uh, NVIDIA drivers website I'll just show you what you actually get this is the website you get and you want to go to drivers um, I'm, don't pay too much attention to this because it could be different by the time you come to download yours this is a website so it can be updated at any point you can either download the automatic driver updates or manual driver search. Just literally pick your 1050 Ti. Your operating system in this case is Windows 10, 64 bit. Language UK. Um, it will go off and find the drivers. 
and you pick the latest one why you wouldn't you pick the latest one download and it'll download it and I've already done that so I've got the driver here ready to install uh, once the driver is downloaded and ready to install just double click on it and that will run the installation wizard may as well pick the default path and that will just go through and uh, run the driver installation Once it's extracted the files, it will check to make sure that you've got a compatible video card in there. Now obviously we know we have because we've just installed it, but if there was any problems with your installation, um, which to be honest you wouldn't be getting a video, you wouldn't, wouldn't be get a picture from the graphics card if it wasn't in, fitted in your machine properly, but um, you know this should verify they can see the video card properly, so if this checks out okay then you, you're pretty good to go. And then you just get your license agreement, which we'll accept. Um, and then you get your installation options. Express is absolutely fine. It's just the uh, additional bits that come with the driver. There's a GeForce Experience thing that checks what games you've got installed and stuff. Um, just click Next. Um, it also installs drivers for 3D Vision. So if you've got a 3D compatible monitor, um, audio drivers for the HDMI, things like that. Um, but it's usually easiest just to accept the Express install. Click Next. And wait, sit back and wait. This will tick through. Takes roughly maybe five minutes or so, depending on the performance of your machine. And there you go. Once the installation's finished, you've got a couple of tick boxes uh, desktop shortcuts. Don't want that. Don't want a large GeForce experience. That's it, done. Um, you may have seen your screen flicker a couple of times during the install, but that's all you need to do. Uh, it's all installed, up and running, ready to go. Um, so let's get some games on this thing and see how it performs.